how to find your purpose in a nine to five? Well, by being human and just embracing being human in that nine to five, you are in many ways embracing your purpose. It's only natural that we would want to think that our purpose is outside of ourselves, and we have to find it, we have to grasp it, we have to go on this journey to experience something outside of ourselves to understand who we are. And unfortunately, that's just filling a void, a, a never-ending void. And that's why we can't get fulfillment through that process. I desire to do inner-focused items like finding my purpose, but I have no time. How does a flower find its scent? It doesn't, it just is. I have to be in my purpose, but I know my purpose is love. I feel that in my essence. Our purpose is not something that we do or an action that we take. Our purpose stems from our being. It's a state of being. So I was out a lot last week between clients and friends and you know, a lot of times we like to address on these podcast repeat themes that come up. And one repeat theme that kept coming up among all of them was finding your purpose in a nine to five world. They were all feeling very bogged down and as though like, look, I go to work, I get there early, I'm in my job all day. By the time I get out of there, I drive back home, I make dinner, I take care of things, maybe I get a chance to work out or I take care of the things that I need to at home. It's time for me to get ready and go to bed and then wake up and take care of it all over again. I desire to do inner focused items like finding my purpose, but I have no time. And then they'll participate in things that'll say, well, take time on the weekends. Well, doesn't that sound like a fun delight? But I have things that I didn't get taken care of during the week that I have to focus on on the weekends, or I'm so freaking tired, I just crash. And if I have time, that's all I want to do. So what is a solution or just anything that someone can do when they're doing their best to find their purpose in a nine to five world. Right. Everything you said just makes so much sense. And it's something that we all feel in some way. And that's why the idea of shifting the narrative around finding your purpose, I think needs to be one of the core aspects. Yeah. Because what that entails is that there's more work to be done. When I hear finding my purpose, it's like, oh, well, there's another thing I need to add. To everything that I'm already doing, and it's something outside of me, and I have to figure it out. I have to do all these other things, and it's like I have to do all this work, and I'm already doing work. And it's just, I think that's the problem with the narrative around finding your purpose. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So it's important for us to remember that our purpose is already within us. This is not an external to an internal thing. And it's hard because in a society where most things are external to internal in terms of the way that we process and understand and learn about ourselves, it's only natural that we would want to think that our purpose is outside of ourselves. And we have to find it. We have to grasp it. We have to you know, go on this journey to experience something outside of ourselves to understand who we are. And unfortunately, that's just filling a void and a never ending void. And that's why we can't get fulfillment through that process. Now, you're not saying that there aren't things that are external that can help you understand Excellent. how to experience your purpose. Right. It's just that your purpose isn't outside of you. Correct. It, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate the clarification. A hundred percent. Um, I want to tell a, just a quick story. Of course. And uh, a, cu a couple years back, uh, more than a couple years back now, I guess. <laughs> I was going to uh, say. Quite a few years back. More than a couple let's, years let's call back. Let's it like seven, eight years ago. Um, we went on a retreat with Swami Purna, and it was amazing. And uh, after the gathering, the first gathering, the first questions came forward, and it was, you know, what do you have for me? What are some questions that I can answer for you? And the first question, someone raised their hand, and this woman said, how do I find my purpose? And just with this twinkle in his eye and this little, you know, cute smile and just, just oozing wisdom, you know, Swami Purna was like, 
how does a flower find its scent? It doesn't. It just is. Yeah. And that was my first, I mean, just the profound wisdom that it just felt like a slap in the face of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I was just, <laughs> you just oh, got smacked. My. Logic dropped. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I mean, the whole room went silent and it was just like, bam. It was so profound in its simplicity. It's right. Like a flower... The flower scent is the flower scent. It's not going outside of itself to be like, oh, I want to smell like a tulip and I'm a rose. It's like, no, it, just, it is what it is already. And so we get, we get caught in this cycle of, of this human doings. And we're, we forget that we're human beings. And so our purpose is not something that we do or an action that we take. Our purpose stems from our being. It's a state of being. If we're like, for example, if we are currently anxious, then we bring that anxiousness into our actions and that's going to follow suit, right? But if we are intentional or purposeful in our state of being, then our actions take form in a state of intentional or purposeful or full of purpose. Yeah. I'm going to take you one further though. Yeah. Are we really human beings or are we experiencing ourselves as human beings? And even that will stop at some point. I love that. Right. I mean, we are why do we have an adjective in front of our being? Like it's not dog being or mm -hmm. elephant being. They're already state, in a state of being because we, re we understand that they are very present as an animal, even a plant where it's not like a ficus being. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing here being a ficus. So Look you're, at me. <laughs> yeah. You're, so right. you're spot on. Why, why are we even called human beings? It's in and you know, maybe that's our way of of seeking to understand that hey we are we are being, and we're experiencing that in the human form, and so it's it's a way to help us understand our form of being in this current state. Yeah, and so when we're talking about understanding our purpose, maybe our own language is pointing us in that direction somewhat. Part of our purpose is to experience being human. And oftentimes we fight that tooth and nail, right? We suppress our feelings. We avoid experiences. We so often, and I can speak firsthand, like ultimately if something feels uncomfortable, we'll desire to avoid the discomfort. But often it is that discomfort that causes growth. And so it's necessary discomfort. Now, obviously, pain is a whole different thing, right? Pain is harmful, but discomfort causes us to grow. And so part of experiencing ourselves as a human is to embrace all of those opportunities. And that's part of the purpose of being here and being human is to have those experiences. So maybe part of our all our collective experience as being humans is to go through these experiences so that we can learn and grow, right? Absolutely. I, I won't even expand on that. I think language is a huge aspect of that. What are the, one of the first things we do when we meet new people or socialize, we say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. We don't say, are you living your purpose? Yeah. And so- Or how are or you living your you, purpose? Yes. Right? And so to bring that back around into how do you incorporate this in a nine to five, mm -hmm. right? How to find your purpose in a nine to five? Well, by being human and just embracing being human in that nine to five, you are in many ways embracing your purpose, right? So how can you embrace that fully and completely? How can you begin to understand you as a human in that nine to five experience? What are things that you're drawn to? What are things that really light you up? For me, I know from my own experience when I was in a nine to five and I had very similar feelings. Let me tell you, I had very similar feelings. Like it felt like a drudge. And then I would get home and I really desired to do all the things that I was learning about personal healing and personal development. And like, man, I just, by the time I took care of my family and I got everyone tucked in and then I still had work, like, how do I do all of this? But what I really, truly enjoyed 
was being in service. But I had also learned that if I'm not in service to myself first, then I can't be in service to the people I cared about. So I needed to find a way to take breaks throughout my workday to be in service of myself and then be in service of others, even though I wasn't in a service role. So how could I do that? What were little things I could learn, little skills I could add that would be what could be considered service skills, but didn't take away from what I actually had to do, which was manage an organization. So I had to figure that out. And I studied and I discovered breath work is a skill I could add to my own arsenal to help myself during the day to take those pauses. But then a service skill I could add to others was creating my office to be a safe space where they could come in and relax for a few moments before they had to head back out and engage in sometimes what could feel almost like a hostile environment. Not intentionally, but just how things, it was so rushed, so stressed, so many things had to happen. And so if they had that moment of an oasis, they could re-engage. And so although I wasn't fully in my purpose all of the time, I was in my purpose because my purpose was to be in service. And therefore, I found a way to do that. Right. Beautifully said. I mean, you had you shifted the dynamic of your purpose instead of it being your action it is who you are yes. and so therefore you're purposeful when anything that you do including your job and that's that's a critical aspect of this whole conversation in terms of finding our purpose right it really is it's 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 more like identifying what brings the best out of us yeah is it and i love your point like acts of service right is it um holding space, as you just said? Is it um, being kind and loving to everyone around you? Is it being a leader and showing what's possible through that leadership? And there's so many, and we could, the list could go on and on and on. And that doesn't just have to exist in, in, the, uh, in the corporate or the business world. Yeah. This is, our purpose is, is who we choose to be in every now moment that lights our spark, that kind of lights the light of other lights in a, in a way, right? There's a reason why when we see people who are, have aligned their work with their purpose and they kind of go hand in hand, it's like a, it's like a mag, there's a lot of magnetism behind it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can feel the passion and the intention and the purpose. It's not because that thing is what has, gives them purpose. They're giving the thing purpose. Yes. And that's, that's the shift. It's from the inside to the out. They're breathing love and purpose and intention into the action that they take. And that could be a business. That could be uh, you know, to their family. Um, that could be uh, brushing their teeth. There's, <laughs> there's, yeah. no, there's, there's no limit. It's only our understanding is what creates the limit around it. Yeah. And when we set limits, as you just pointed out, you know, to hear, and believe me, again, I have so much compassion because it does, it feels like you are bound in this box when you have such a regimented schedule. But that's also what we do to ourselves when we put ourselves in the box of, I am a human being, right? We are these things. We have these schedules, but we are not limited by that. I am not only a human being. I am, when I stop being a human being, I thoroughly believe I am something beyond that. This is an experience I am having, and I will be something else beyond being a human being. And I will value every experience I take with me from being a human being. While being a human being, I am having all of these experiences that will contribute to my life. What I infuse as far as purpose into being a human being and into every experience while I have, while being a human being, is up to my soul, spirit, whatever you desire to call it, my energy form, 
There are so many things we can call it, but ultimately consciousness. What I consciously bring to the table, that is something that I can focus on no matter what I'm doing, whether it's being human, whether it's working my nine to five job, whether it's being with my family. I get to choose how I am going to focus on that. And it can be bound or it can be boundless. Mm. And so I'm choosing, not always. I mean, come on, I'm human. Sometimes I want to be in a comfort zone because being uncomfortable all the time can cause you to become numb. So I'm not always going to choose to be uncomfortable. Sometimes I want to sit on the sofa Mm. and just zone out and watch a show. But doing that all the time is going to limit my experience too. So I have to push and I have to be in my purpose. But I know my purpose is love. I feel that in my essence. And so when you find your essence, maybe your essence is expanding your intellect. Maybe your purpose and your essence is enjoying luxury and that's what really calls you like there's no one thing that we're all here to experience there's lots of different experiences for a reason but when you find that allow yourself to follow that and to just you don't dive in all at once that's another thing like for me when i was like okay i know love is a primary purpose for me have other purposes, but love is a primary purpose. And it's not like I can just go from, okay, I have been doing this for the primary part of my life, and now I'm just going to cut bait and go this way. Yeah. I'm a C level exec, and now I'm just love. Yes. Like it, it doesn't just shift like that. Exactly. Yeah. So the other thing I would say is take time to gradually make the shift. Otherwise, you can throw your entire experience off. And I have seen individuals do this. Mm -hmm. They discover that they love, like their purpose is expressing themselves through art, Mm -hmm. expressing their soul through art. But they're in a technology field. Mm -hmm. Well, there are ways you can express yourself through art and technology. Mm -hmm. But if you just quit your technology job and pivot, and desire to become a painter, it's a beautiful thing to do, but it can also leave you in fear and in lack. And suddenly you're scrambling and your purpose becomes your greatest fear Mm -hmm. instead of your greatest expression of self. And that's not what we desire either. So you're no longer caught in that nine to five and feel like you can't express your purpose. But now you're caught in fear and feel like you can't express your purpose. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's that to me is part of the trap of connecting the purpose to the doing or the mm-hmm. action. Right. It's like, hey, yeah, I want to be a painter. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And maybe that does excite your soul and you feel connected to that. But the moment you quit your job and then decide to be a painter and then you don't sell your paintings, then immediately, you know, you feel unfulfilled. You feel like your whole self-worth went completely gone. It's completely gone. Yeah. Then what happens? Then there's this whole question, well, you know, was this my purpose all along? You know, about about all these things that we start to question, you know, am I, am I worthy of this? Am I, you know, all these, all this fear and lack that you're talking about. I think this is again, back to the beginning of this conversation of, of tying the, the purpose outside of ourselves instead of in. Recognizing, okay, yes, painting is an action, but what stems painting? It's creativity, right? Creativity is a deep, deep form of of love and and connection. And so, okay, great. Well, what if what if I'm able to bring my love and connection and creativity into all that I do, whether I am brushing my teeth or you know how I connect with my family or what I am doing in my current job? Am I in a role that is maybe Maybe I'm in customer service, but I really need to be in creativity, like creating logos or in the marketing field or um, building websites or something like that. Because I, I, maybe I like my job or the field I'm in, but I don't like the role that I'm in. 
And so it's a way to pivot and create that shift and still be more aligned with our purpose that we are breathing into the actions that we take. And we can find, that's where we find joy in that happiness. And we start to to have that magnetism because we're bringing passion into something. And again, it's we are bringing it into the action, not the other way around. And so that's it's it is it is tough when we see people say like, oh, I'm you know this is I'm going to completely quit my job and I'm going to do something completely different. I mean, props for Moxie. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, that's it takes a lot of guts, a lot of effort, and a lot of self belief and confidence to do that. That is hard. I don't want to knock that down in any sh- way, shape, or form. Yeah. But again, part of purpose is intention. Yeah. And if we don't have a true intention behind the way that we're expressing our purpose, then we can land flat on our face and then we'll feel worse than where we were than we thought we were yeah. uh, all along. And so that's what we're attempting to do is 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 kind of bring forward another a new narrative in this in this in this sentiment of purpose, recognizing that it's not outside of ourselves, it's within. And that there are intentional steps that we can take to experience our purpose in our day-to-day lives. And whether that action shifts our nine to five or it doesn't, that's for us to explore and understand as we are a human being in this experience. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Exactly. And the narrative is a key aspect, right? Because we have been sold the outside to in narrative for a very, very long time. And to rewrite that, even in the smallest ways, it matters. It really matters. Like our purpose is ours to define, it is ours to feel and then. When I say define, I mean determine how we will express that purpose. So you could tell me, well, if you're love, then your purpose is like your, if your purpose is love, then your action should be this, this, and this. Well, that might be how you view the expression of the purpose of love. But I came in with the purpose of love as defined by how my soul desired to express that purpose. And so maybe your, if it's not your primary purpose, maybe you came in with a secondary purpose of love as a support to whatever your primary purpose or goal was. And that's how your soul is telling you to express that. But I don't have to take on the way you desire to express love. I need to experience the way that I came in desiring to express love, to express my purpose, because then that allows me to inspire those that I was meant to inspire. Otherwise, I'm not fulfilling what I set out to do. So I have to hold true to what sparks within me. Mm. And each one of us should be willing to do that, even in, this, in the capacity to which we feel drawn, right? Absolutely. Without guilt, without shame, just being willing to hold to that. And that's a key as well, because the narrative will always tell us from the other person's perspective, because that's what's true for them. That is 100% what's true for them mm-hmm. in their flow in their knowing in that time. But that doesn't mean that we have to buy the story they're selling. People don't have to buy the story we're selling right now. And we're okay with that. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. For all of us to know what's true for us, to be inspired by what feels true from others, and then to build upon that for our own life experience. So well said. For me, my expression of, of love and bringing that purpose into it is one to, to help others understand the light and love and purpose within them. Yeah. 
regardless whether that's in golf, whether that's in a conversation, whether that's in uh, you know a podcast or through our website or whatever I feel like I'm I'm attempting to do, even if it's just holding space, being there with a friend or um, family, anything. That's 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 what lights me up. I feel I feel like. What helped me understand that was when you saw something in me that I had yet to see in myself, that was one of the biggest epiphanies that I've ever experienced in this, in this human experience. And when I did recognize the love and the light within myself, I was then able to see that in others. And all I desire to do is just show others the very thing that I experienced in that way. And to let them recognize the light within them. And then I'm excited because I get to see that. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> and so there are more than one. Love is limitless. Like hum, human, part of being the human, part of this human experience is, is understanding the possibility of love. You know, love is a spectrum. It's this incredible coexistence of everything on the one end of the spectrum being hate and one, the other side being complete unconditional love that we don't even know how to even fully embody yet. That's, there's a lot in between that. <laughs> so there's a lot of purpose in, in doing that can, can be formed from within that spectrum, right? Yeah. And so when I had that recognition, because I spent so much of my, you know, after golf was, I found out I'd never play golf again. And that was my life path. And I thought that was my purpose was to be a golfer. And that was taken away from me just from an injury. I was like, man, well, now I, what, what am I? I don't have any value. What am I going to do with my life? Um, and then I got into entrepreneurship and I started using the idea of being an entrepreneur, like as fulfilling that purpose. And, and then by the, my mid twenties, I was, I was even more unhappy and depressed than I could ever even imagine. And then that little thing that you shared with me, seeing what I didn't see in myself, you know, that, that flipped the script for me. That recognized I was spent my whole life up to that point, taking everything outside of me and bringing it in to define myself, to say that this is my purpose or this is what I'm here to do. And I was completely missing out on what I'm here to be. And that moment of clarity I had in my first meditation in Sedona, realizing that I had spent, I was spending so much of my waking hours filling moments to make me happy by doing things. And in that moment, I was doing nothing and I was extremely happy. It's like, <laughs> you know, um, it's just, man. So I just, I really desire others to. Because we've been there and we're still there experiencing it and understanding it. And like, we don't have it down. Part of this is the learning, the learning flow of it all. Yeah. But to know what else is possible is the whole fun of it. And to then see others breathe their purpose into the actions that they take, that just only shows me what's possible for humanity. And that's so exciting to me. Exactly. And the goal, part of the purpose, I would say for me as love, is to constantly share what I gain and still ask what else is possible for me, right? Mm -hmm. To always know that I can learn from others, I can learn from every experience, and if I find something very valuable on my journey, someone else might too. And to always be willing to share that from a mindful place, knowing that not everyone is going to find value, but there may be many who do. And so that's why you have a community where you share and you lean in on each other and you really understand that when you're on a journey like this and you're sharing purpose and growing together, that you're going to have those times where you are going to have doubt in your purpose. And that's where having individuals who are on that type of a journey and they know their purpose and they're expressing that purpose, but still be part of being human 
is having doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Or having those moments where life just comes in and mm -hmm. it's yeah. And so you need to have the, you need to be with that. And that's why I love what our team member, Dr. Rosie Kuhn says, you need to have a place where you feel seen, heard, and understood. And you can know your purpose to the end of the moon and back but it doesn't mean that you don't need a safe space. And so part of our purpose is also to have that safe space. Right. Yeah. Through, through love, the action we're taking is holding space. Exactly. Right? And the heart leader community, and that's put in place by Suivera, our organization, I think that's, that's our purpose. Yeah. So even as an organization, mm -hmm. there must be purpose, right? Even in the nine to five. Yes. So there's all kinds of things that people can learn about through these podcasts about our purpose. Okay. So I encourage them to continue to go on and look at more podcasts. Yes, I agree. And, uh, you know, check out our new community. I mean, that's, that's really my new life launchpad is a brand new community that we're, we're we have available and it's, it's really centered on the community aspect of what it means to be in this space, in this world that's so confusing. It's constantly telling us how to be, what to be, when to be. <laughs> um, and, and it's even less about the being. It's all about here's what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, and just completely forget about your being. <laughs> and so you know, we have uh, all these tools and, and a community really designed to help individuals take that deep dive into it and hold space and all rise together through this. Yeah. And so you know, this is a conversation that I feel will be pretty continual in this. When we have experts coming in and sharing their thoughts, we'll have us sharing our thoughts regularly every single month. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a continual topic. Understanding purpose is a strong part of the human, uh, the human humanity of just what we being just being human. human right i mean it's been part of being human for thousands of years and there's no i wouldn't say there's a right way to do it mm -hmm. but when we can do it together when we can do it from a space of love when we can connect in that and allow the knowledge and the skills to enhance the purpose that we feel within us and breathe that into the actions that we take i i can only see uh greater potential from that experience. I agree.